الرحيم موضوع المحاضرة عن الميتابوليزم of lipoproteins and cholesterol لكن في introduction بالنسبة للموضوع before we go to discuss the concepts of lipoproteins in depth زي ما معروف lipids are insoluble or at least they are relatively insoluble so when they are transported in the blood they must be in association with systems that allow for them to be isolated from the aqueous phase so usually they are transported in association with proteins for example the unesterified free fatty acids they are usually complex in their transport to albumin triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters these are insoluble lipids and they are transported in association with a system called lipoproteins the lipoproteins are about particles lipids proteins people in physical association with each other it is a non-covalent association يعني لما نرسم اللايبوبروتين بارتيكل كده بتبقى شكلها جلوبيول كده والجلوبيول دي طبعا هيبقى لها سنترال كور ومحوطه بشيل في كومبوننتس في السنترال كور وفي كومبوننتس في الشيل يبقى ده هو الكور ودي هي الشيل حوالين الكور The diagram representative of lipoprotein particle. فهنا في السنتر بتاعها ده هو ال core وال components of the core وهنا في ال periphery في ال shell وفي components of the shell. The components of the core include triacylglycerol. This is insoluble and it also includes cholesterol esters. These are insoluble hydrophobic molecules. The components of the shell, yani we expect the components of the shell to have some degree of polarity in order to be able to interface with the aqueous phase, be it the blood in the extracellular fluid or the cytosol inside the cell. So the components of the shell include, number one, Phospholipids, they have a polar part. This is located externally to interface with the aqueous phase, while the nonpolar part is directed internally. But one important component of the shell is the unesterified cholesterol. Lahazanabul, unesterified cholesterol is a component of the shell as opposed to cholesterol ester, an esterified cholesterol as a component of the core. So, unesterified cholesterol, a ring structure, where an appendage of hydrocarbon side chain, this is hydrophobic and is directed inwards, and it has a polar part or hydrophilic part, which is the hydroxyl group attached to carbon atom number three, and this is located on the surface of the shell of the lipoprotein to interface with the aqueous phase. So this is cholesterol. So phospholipids and the cholesterol are two constituents of the shell of the lipoprotein. The third constituent of the shell is a group of proteins which are collectively known as apoproteins. And some of them are specific to each type of lipoproteins. لو تلاحظ أنا لما كلمت على ال components of the core old cholesterol ester لما كلمت على ال components of the shell old unesterified cholesterol so we have cholesterol and we have cholesterol ester so the structure of cholesterol is composed of this four ring structure this is ring number one number two number three number four and then an appendage of side chain hydrocarbon زي ما احنا شايفين كده. Collectively, في 27 carbons في ال structure ده. This is the basic structure of cholesterol. And يعني essentially, ال cholesterol وال cholesterol ester have the same basic structure. Four ring structure 
and the side chain. The difference between cholesterol and cholesterol ester is at carbon atom number three. As we can see in carbon atom number three in the cholesterol, we have a hydroxyl group. In this way, the molecule of cholesterol is made of a ring structure and the side chain, and this is the hydrophobic part. But the hydroxyl group, this is a polar or hydrophilic part. ده مع بعضه بنسميه ايه؟ بنسميه amphipathic يعني ايه amphipathic؟ يعني a molecule that contains both moieties a hydrophobic moiety and a hydrophilic moiety بالنسبة للكوليسترول ester يعني عند carbon atom number 3 اللي هي بتبقى فيها OH في الكوليسترول بيبقى موجود هنا يعني الهيدروكسل بتاعة الاوريجنال كوليسترول بتعمل ester bond مع كاربوكسيل جروب بتاعت فاتي اسيد يعني اسمها استر بوند استر بوند والاستر بوند دي الاستريفيكيشن رياكشن ده عباره عن كوندنسيشن رياكشن يعني ان ذا فورميشن اوف ذيس بوند بيتوين ذا هيدروكسيل جروب اند ذا كاربوكسيل جروب ذا هيدروكسيل اوف ذا اوريجينال cholesterol and the carboxyl of the fatty acid, a molecule of water between the two is lost. Hydrogen from this side where hydroxyl from that side. So we lose a molecule of water. So the structure of the cholesterol ester, it is composed of a side chain. This is hydrocarbon, hydrophobic part, and the structure of the ring, which is also hydrophobic. And now it doesn't have the hydroxyl group but it has an acyl group this two is hydrophobic this means that the cholesterol ester is completely hydrophobic and this is why it is embedded in the core of the lipoprotein because of the presence of this ester bond and we now replace the hydrophilic part of the hydroxyl the OH group with an acyl group which is hydrophobic. Like in a cholesterol, the hydroxyl group are represented here by this white circle. It is situated on the surface of the shell in contact with the aqueous phase. While the ring structure being hydrophobic and also the side chain, it is situated away. So this is the difference between the cholesterol and cholesterol ester. We have to appreciate that lipoproteins are not uniform. In other words, there are different classes or types of lipoproteins. These types include the chylomicrons, and the chylomicrons are produced by the enterocytes. Then we have the very low density lipoproteins, and these are produced by the liver. And the very low density lipoproteins, the circulation, it is processed into the low density lipoprotein. And in the course of being processed to the low density lipoproteins, the very low density lipoproteins go through an intermediary phase, it's a mere intermediate density lipoproteins. So we have three species here of lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, intermediate density lipoproteins, and very low density lipoproteins, they are interrelated in terms of the fact that they arise from the very low density lipoproteins, which is produced in the liver, and the very low density lipoprotein is processed into intermediate density lipoprotein and further processed into low density lipoprotein. We have a different type of lipoproteins which is called the high density lipoproteins and this is going to be discussed separately. These different types or classes of lipoprotein, they differ in their contents of the core components, for example triacylglycerols and, and uh, cholesterol esters or the shell components like unesterified cholesterol or lipoprotein content and these differences between the different lipoproteins reflect on other attributes of the lipoproteins like for example the, the density and the size of the lipoprotein now we will move to this table 
In this table, we listed the different classes of lipoproteins and their contents of the core components and the shell components and also some of the attributes of the lipoproteins like their diameter and their density we are going to compare the different classes of lipoproteins the table there the highest value for any of the components or the attributes is underlined uh, in red and the lowest value is underlined in green so لو نلاحظ هنا قارن triacyl glycerol between the different classes of lipoproteins and the highest content of triacyl glycerol موجود في chylomicrons a very low density lipoproteins still have a considerable amount of triacyl glycerols but not as high as in the chylomicrons remember the chylomicron is produced by enterocytes while the very low, low density lipoproteins is produced by the liver cells and when the very low density lipoproteins are processed to the high density lipoproteins they lose a substantial part of their content of the triacyl glycerol and when they are further processed into the low density lipoprotein they still lose their content of triacyl glycerol so as far as triacyl glycerol is concerned the highest amongst the lipoproteins in the content of triacyl glycerol is the chylomicron and the trend goes this way uh, so that the low density lipoprotein and the high density lipoprotein have the least amount of triacyl glycerol we don't need to know the values the figures we just need to understand the trends and the rationale behind that uh, when we consider the second component of the core of the lipoprotein particle namely the cholesterol ester we find a very different trend just the opposite to the triacyl glycerol so that the chylomicron has trivial amounts of cholesterol ester and the amount increases as we go in this direction so that low density lipoprotein indeed has the highest amount 50% of the components of the low density lipoprotein is cholesterol ester and the cholesterol follows the same trend the other important component of the shell is the apoproteins and again the trend for the apoprotein follows the same trend like cholesterol and cholesterol ester so we have trivial amounts of proteins in the chylomicrons and the concentration increases as we go in this direction and indeed the high density lipoproteins have the highest content of proteins yani 50% of the contents of the high density lipoproteins is proteins also the, lipo the high density lipoproteins are concentrated in phospholipids the differences among us, the different classes of lipoproteins in the components of the core, the core and the shell reflects itself on some other attributes of the particle, for example, the diameter. يعني لاحظ هنا أن الكيلومايكرون is a huge particle. It has a huge diameter. And the diameter goes down as we go through the VLDL or ID, then IDL then LDL and indeed the HDL is the, the smallest of them when we come to the density the trend is just the opposite to the size so although the, the chylomicrons is the largest lipoprotein particle it has the lowest density amongst them and the density increases as we go in this direction until the HDL has the highest density of course uh, if you notice the nomenclature of most of the uh, lipoproteins is the reflection of their density so with the exception of the chylomicrons here is very low density lipoprotein intermediate density lipoprotein low density lipoprotein high density lipoprotein so the density goes up from the chylomicrons which, is, which has the lowest density to the high density lipoprotein which has the highest density so